With the initial release of Fortuna and Kid Guns, the Tomb Finger kinda took a backseat to the Catch Moon, at least in the initial phases, but after the nerfs, the Tomb Finger became the most powerful Kid Gun you can build. And it looks like it's gonna be the same story for primary Kid Guns as well. Hey guys, welcome back, as always, my name is Lazar, and today we're gonna be diving deeper into the Tomb Finger primary Kid Gun. I got a couple of builds lined up, something cheap, something affordable, something that most players should be able to build, but of course we also have the quote-unquote endgame setup with a Riven. Even though, bear in mind that the current Riven disposition for the Tomb Finger is only 1 out of 5. That said though, please keep in mind that my builds and guides usually take a new player friendly approach. I like to take my time and explain a lot of the aspects that veteran players should already be accustomed to. So in case you're a vet and you already know most of this stuff, please bear with me. And with that out of the way, let's jump into the Tomb Finger. Let's begin by checking out how the weapon handles without any mods equipped. And for that, just a couple of free shots. The Tomb Finger Primary is a powerhouse which can be fired in two very different ways. First off, you got to your quick shot, my friends. Now, this one is a projectile based attack, so leaving your targets is definitely a thing. Upon contact, these projectiles will be detonating in a 1.7 meter radius, so it does deal two sources of damage and therefore two sources of a potential proc. First off, you got the projectile physically hitting the target, and second of all, you do have that small explosion, 1.7 meter range again. Now that is the quick shot mode, but you can also fully charge these shots like so to get a much bigger and more potent explosion. 6.2 meters range on this one. Of course you can aim for the peak if you so desire, but keep in mind you still have those two sources of damage. The projectile making contact with a target does deal a significant amount of damage. So if you can make contact, make contact. That said, there's one issue with these charge shots. Actually a couple of issues. Let's start with the first one, the charge time. Depending on how you mod it and build the actual kit gun, it can get to pretty high amounts. This is 1.4 seconds and honestly unmodded or untouched by any attack speed increases, it's pretty annoying from mission to mission. Yes, it does deal a whole lot of damage, but still it's a little bit clunky and you know what happens with clunky weapons. You end up not using them most of the time. Another thing that is a problem, you cannot hold the charge in. Like you would with the Lanka, for example, when you go Eidolon hunting, you can hold the charge in until you're good and ready, not so with this one. So because of all these aspects, I want to talk a bit more on how you should build the Tomb Finger primary. But for that, we're going to have to visit Radzad. So let's build a kit gun, shall we? We're going to start off with the Tomb Finger, of course, and then we're going to go to the grip. Ah, here's where the plot thickens. Normally, most people go for Tremor, right? And the loader... When it comes to the loader, honestly, it's your kettle of fish, it's your business. I recommend to either splat or kill stream. You see the difference between these two? You don't? Well, let me show you preview gilded then if you can't see the difference. Let's change it from splat to kill stream. It's a very small difference on that one. Basically, you get a smaller magazine but a faster reload. That's it. Okay, that's the difference between kill stream and splat. I recommend splat, but it doesn't matter if you go for kill stream. This one is basically preference based. What is more important, however, is the grip. I want you to take a look at the brash grip right now. Take a look at the charge time. Instead of that massive 1.4, you get half a second. Basically, you can get two shots off and still have a 0.4 buffer. Theoretically, again, we are talking paper DPS right now. That's still 1.4 seconds. That is, and it's gone. That's it. All right. No human will react that fast. Let's be honest here. Well, unless you're, anyway, that's not important. Fire rate is also a whole lot better, so essentially with the brash grip you're getting a much better charge time and you're also going to be getting fire rate. And you're going to say something like, hey listen man, I don't care because I can put something like Vile Acceleration or Speed Trigger, I don't need the faster charge rate. Yes you can, but in using that mod on your weapon you are making a compromise. You can put something else instead of Vile Acceleration if you don't need it. So the question is, which becomes better because honestly these are the two best grips for this weapon. Take a look at this. What is the damage sacrifice that you gotta make? As you can see, when it comes to charge shots, it's a whole lot better to go for the brash, 100%. But if you're talking about quick shots, then the superior choice would still be Tremor. Of course, this is still paper DPS, it's spreadsheet DPS, so in order to actually fully understand and test which one of these was actually better or which one of these should I recommend to you guys, I did the following. Well. Allow me to introduce you to the Obrama brothers, okay? They're the fantastic people, you should definitely meet them. You got Breck and Brooke Obrama. Now, Brooke Obrama over here 
has the brass grip and Brack has the tremor. Off to the simulacrum, again. So essentially what we're gonna be doing next is fully kit out both of these weapons. We got 5, 4, my inch, we got the Plexilla Sloppy, we essentially got everything. And then you can draw a conclusion, which one do you want to play with? I have a favorite, I'll keep it at the end for you guys. It's it's not necessarily a better from a, uh, I don't know, mathematical point of view, it's simply the one I enjoy playing with more. But before we get into that, mod capacity 60 out of 60, and if yours has 30 out of 30, jump into actions and install the Orokin Catalyst, doubling your mod capacity. You can grind this one from Nightwave, you can get a blueprint from the Daily Sortie, you can also pay 20 plat to have one installed. For the weapon build, I'm gonna be recommending you guys about three formats should do it. Mine have five because ribbons and stuff and puff. When it comes to arcanes, honestly, use whatever you want on these guys. Pack Seeker. <sighs> will provide a little bit more DPS, but honestly, I would go with Pax Charge and just forget about ammo. I did not have ammo issues with any of these, so I guess you can go with Seeker. Critical chance 38% with a critical multiplier of 2.3x. This is guaranteed by our loader, okay? Keep in mind that Splat and Kill Stream will give you the same critical chance and critical multiplier. It's just the, the um, reload time and the actual magazine size differs for those loaders. Fire rate of 2.13 with a magazine of 23. Again, keep in mind this is the one with the tremor grip. Multi-shot of wine, nose alarming, Revan disposition of one. Yeah. What can I tell you guys, it's sad, and I don't recommend ribbons for Dispo 1 weapons, but we do have a pretty good ribbon for this one. Status chance of 16%. Now, normally you would say this is a little bit low, but keep in mind you got two sources every time you fire, right? The projectile making contact with the target and the actual explosion. Whether that be quick shot or whether that be fully charged shot. Now, let's check out a standard build. And we got a whole lot of damage and multi-shot with split chamber, critical chance, critical damage combo between point strike, vital sense, and of course hunter munitions and the vital combo had to be here. I'm sorry my friends, this is the meta. You wanna go corrosive? Then you're a man after my own heart. But right now, this is simply more powerful. It's math, you can't beat it. This is your option slot. Now, in the case of Braco Brahma that is using the Tremor Grip, you gotta go for at least one fire rate mod from my point of view because it's simply too slow otherwise. So essentially, I went with Vile Acceleration. You can also go with Speed Trigger. Now, if you go with Speed Trigger, your charge rate will become 0.68. If you go with Vile Acceleration, it's gonna become 0.54. It takes away 15% of the damage, Vile Acceleration. Honestly, from my point of view, it's not that big of a deal, but some people dislike it. I still think it's the best fire rate mod. I still think that getting 60, 30% uh, extra fire rate is worth the 15% damage it takes away from your serration. For an Exilus mod slot, honestly, it doesn't really matter all that much. Terminal Velocity MVP from my point of view because 60% projectile flight speed. You don't have any fall off here per se in the actual stats, but this one will help you get damage more consistent on your targets, especially when it comes to the actual projectile making contact with a target. You can also go with Stabilizer if you don't enjoy the recoil, and by all means, it does have a bit of a recoil on it, so that you go. This is the initial build we're going to be testing with the first one, okay? With the Tremor Grip. Now, let's be honest here. What do you guys want to see is big damage. Yes, big damage, big explosions. And you got 5,120 on this one. If you were to go... What, uh, what did I say? Speed Trigger. Yes, if you were to go with Speed Trigger instead, just so you can understand what is the damage difference. You see that? 5,427. It's not that big of a deal. So we're gonna test out the weapon initially like so. Uncorrupted Heavy Goons, level 120, as per huge. Hold on, let me make sure Mesa doesn't have anything that might skew my test results. No corrosive projection. Wait, wrong button. No corrosive projection, no arcane. Energized velocity is fine. Velocity applies to secondary weapons. Pistol lamp to secondary weapons. This should be good. Should be good. We're good to test. Wee! Check out my wings. I love my wings. They're fantastic. It's Tenogen though. But it's so fantastic, really. We're gonna go straight for headshots as per the usual and take a look at all that damage, my friends. 17,000 bleed on the target. It is dead, it is gone. But by one shot without ribbons, without any fancy mods. What fancy mods could I possibly use? We don't have, like, any prime, primary, prime, primary what? Prime, primary what in this case? Don't tell me about the cold mod. No, not about the cold mod. Never mind the cold mod. The point is, my friends, the performance of the weapon is absolutely fantastic. If you go straight for damage or if you go for AoE shots, it does make a difference only to the primary target per se, like so. Of course, Battle Slash, as per usual, is the meta. What you should have noticed is that my charge time is a whole lot better than before. See that? 
Now this, from my humble, subjective point of view, is a whole lot more playable than before, which is why we went with Vile Acceleration on this build. That was a 20,000 slash. Absolutely fantastic. So Brack did pretty good, but what about Brook? Will he do better or not? Well, when it comes to his brother, his younger brother, I might say, things are actually a bit different. You might think this one will deal less damage, but actually that is not the case. And allow me to show you why that is. When it comes to the charge shot damage, you got 7400 because I don't need to use speed trigger on this one. I don't need to use Vile Acceleration. I already have half a second charge time. And because of that, I have one free mod that I can do whatever I want with it. Perhaps maybe I want more critical chance, but I already have 95%. I'm good on that one. But if you like more crits, if you got orange crits, if you want orange crits, go with Argon Scope. That's one option you can go for. I chose to go with Heavy Caliber because from a mathematical perspective, this is simply better. What can I tell you? Oh, and in the Weapon Excellence mod slot, as before, you can go with something like Terminal Velocity or Stabilizer and all whatnot. So actually, this one will deal more damage. When it comes to charge shots, again, we're not talking about quick shots. Most people will be using it for charge shots. At least that is my assumption for this specific weapon. Beautiful. Absolutely freaking fantastic. So now you have your answer. If you want to play into charge shots, you go with Brash. If you want to play into quick shots, then you can go safely with Tremor. Now we're going to be respawning these targets one more time, okay, one more time. Yes, this one deals more damage when it comes to heavy shots simply because of the um, heavy caliber mod that I was able to use on this one. That's why I said that basically building it with Tremor is a compromise when you take into account fire rate mods. I don't need to use a fire rate mod on this one, therefore I get better damage. This will be quick shots, right? Using this weapon in quick shots doesn't really make a whole lot of reason to me because if you want to go for an experience such as this, there are plenty of other more powerful weapons. You can go for a bullet host or something along these lines. But again, you can if you so desire. That is quick shot performance. Again, you hit a target at about 50%, then watch the slashes deal the damage. Now let's quickly change over to Brack. This one performs a whole lot better when it comes to charge shots, so bear that one in mind. Make sure we don't use the Riven setup, so we're not cheating with anything. One more time, Corrupted Heavy Goons, level 120, and this time we're gonna go with Quick Shots. Take a look at that. Essentially what happens is that the Tremor Grip doesn't compromise damage when it comes to Quick Shots, but the Brash Grip does, okay? So once again, my friends, if you wanna use it for Quick Shots, build it with tremor if you want to use it for heavy shots or charge shots then build it with brash that is my recommendation to you guys hopefully i made my point as clear as i possibly could now there's one more thing which we can do of course bump up everything with warframe buffs and for that we're going to be using the ever so lovely lady mirage prime but before that <laughs> riven setups yes let's talk about rivens uh again i don't recommend rivens for dispo one weapons because in order to actually get a riven which would be worth slotting into your weapon you're gonna be either very lucky or very rich one of the two if you're willing to spend a whole lot of plat on rivens this one is mine legitimately mine this one is like legitimately mine multi-shot critical chance damage Minus projectile speed, that is definitely not ideal, but of course I can offset it with terminal velocity, 60% projectile flight speed. First we're gonna go with Brack, so that's the Tremor Grip, 122% critical chance now, by the way, and 5 point something critical multiplier. And let's be honest, you're gonna use this weapon like so, aren't you? This is how you're gonna be using the weapon. Can you notice the charge time on this one? I don't have room anymore, sadly, for a fire rate mod. I took off the fire rate mod in favor of a Riven. And these will be the biggest explosions, right? If that's what you're interested in. Let's say you don't care about usability in Warframe. I don't care. I just want the biggest explosion I can possibly get. Then in that case, you still go with Tremor. But it's going to be a whole lot slower than before. Again, this to me got really annoying while I was leveling the weapon. It was simply too slow, which is why we went for fire rate. And that's the Riven setup on this one. And now we're going to be changing to the brother, Brook. 
Also, let me know in the comment section down below if you think it's actually worth me building multiple kit guns or just should I just tell you my recommendation from the start like I normally do. It's the same build, same build as before, but of course, the same ribbon, multi shock critical chance damage, minus PFS. Projectile flight speed or projectile speed. I'm not really sure how the pronounces it or names it, but it's a lot faster. It's the same weapon, same weapon. You see my point? This is why I recommend the brash grip. And now, finally, my friends, Lady Mirage Prime. Keep in mind that if you're gonna use this weapon with a Warframe such as Hero, right, that provides fire rate, then you can go for a slower grip, like the Tremor. But in our case, Lady Mirage Prime. I just like saying that because she's amazing. She honestly is amazing. My favorite Warframe. Now, when it comes to buffs, you can go with corrosive projection against Grenier, but you can also use something like Rifle Amp. If you're gonna go with Rifle Amp, you can also use something like Coaction Drift to pump up the level. Let's go with Rifle Amp this time, right? We haven't done it in a while, so there you go. When it comes to Arcanes, we can go with Arcane Rage R5 on headshot, a 15% chance for a massive 180% damage to primary weapons for 24 seconds. Farm from the third Eidolon down on Cetus. You know what's also farm from the third Eidolon down on Cetus? <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry, I had to do it. Arcane Avenger R5, 21% chance for plus 45% critical chance for 12 seconds. This is a bonus additive after, meaning what? Meaning it applies to your primary weapon, secondary weapon, and your melee as well. Also, it stacks on top of what you already have, so it doesn't really care about the base critical chance of your weapon. This being a primary weapon, you also gotta get a sentinel. Any sentinel will do, my friends. What do you guys say about the djinn? You like the, the djinn? Yeah, we're gonna go with Helios on that one. And on the sentinel's weapon, make sure you have all the vigilante mods for the plus 20% chance to enhance critical hits from primary weapons. Even if the sentinel dies and never comes back to life, you will still retain that buff, so bear that one in mind. Level 150 Corrupted Heavy Goons. We're gonna pause these guys, we're gonna unpause these guys, of course, that's what I meant. Activate Mirage's free ability for a fantastic damage increase as well as her ever so lovely Cologne. Like so. <laughs> this is absolutely beautiful, man. Absolutely freaking fantastic. Make sure you get a vantage point, okay, for the biggest wall up worth of damage that you can. That slash is gonna be worth over 20,000, of course, the target will be bleeding out. The reason why I say get a vantage point with Mirage is the farther away you are from your targets, the easier it is to hit with all the clones in the exact same point. You make a big, big explosion. Yes, yes, big, big explosion OP. Of course, we're gonna change to the brother as well. I didn't waste all that time for my two of them not to use both of them. So we're gonna go with, oh, this was Brook. We're gonna go with Breck. Of course, it defaults to Riven setups, just so you know, as soon as you change your weapons. And Terminal Velocity actually makes a difference, honestly, when it comes to the usability of the, of the weapon. So do try to get that one on your build. It might require one more format depending on your ribbon or if you have a ribbon per se. As always, my name is Blue Lazar. Thank you guys so much for watching. Like, favorite, share, and subscribe if you enjoy the content. If you got any sorts of feedback for me, oh my god, that's perfect. Like, make sure to leave it in the comment section down below. But in all honesty, my friends, I can't exactly promise you that it'll be done by next time or even within a week because sometimes these things take a while to make. But what I can promise you is that I will be reading for each and every comment. You can also find me on Twitch, Facebook, Twitter, all the usual places. But until next time, my friends, bye-bye.